Hello, everyone. Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. After rejecting Thomas yet again, hope is comforted by Finn. All products and services featured are independently chosen by editors. However, Soaps.com may receive a commission on orders placed through its retail links, and the retailer may receive certain auditable data for accounting purposes. We open with Thomas asking, yet again, if Hope will be his wife. Once again, she does the whole you know how I feel about you, and you know how I feel about you, dance. But he concludes, you're not ready to marry me. He admits he knew she'd reject him yet again. You'll never be able to marry me, and that's why I've moved on with Paris. Thomas tells Hope that he could gather the family and grab Carter to perform the ceremony, and her answer would still be no. And while that broke his heart before, he's now in love with Paris. My heart is whole, he says. You and I will always be there for each other. Douglas connects us forever, but I've moved on. I've found my person with Paris. And you'll find your person too. Thomas goes on to say he's happy and knows she'll find happiness too. Somehow the show resists the urge to immediately cut to a scene featuring Finn. Outside Paris is still reeling about the fact that Thomas asked Eric if they could get married at the mansion. Brooke asks when the wedding might be and Paris says she's not exactly sure, but hopes it'll be soon. Trust us Paris on this show, you'll either get married next week or go directly to the back burner until you break up Ala Katie and Carter. She can't wait to be Thomas' wife. Ridge says there's a lot to celebrate, and the three of them discuss the elephant in the room. Hope and her lingering feelings for Paris Guy, speaking of which Paris decides she should go and find her hubby-to-be. Lys swings by Finn's office, surprised to see him. She thought he'd be ho with the family, but he shares that he is on call and had to scrub in for an emergency. If anyone can understand this insane schedule, it's you, he tells his mom. She does, but also knows that after everything that's happened in recent months, read, Shyla, he needs to spend as much time as possible with his wife and kids. Leah reminds Finn that while Shyla may be his, say it with us, biological mother, she's also a menace to society in general and his family in particular. Shyla doesn't deserve your love and sympathy, Lai insists. You need to prioritize your wife and kids, they must always come first. Finn swears that he's got his priorities in order, and that he's cut Shyla out of his life, and I'm serious this time. Lai warns that if he's not careful, Shyla will be the death of his marriage. Lee asks Finn if Hope is still close to that father of hers. She points out that Deacon must have a screw loose to be with Shyla. Lee's glad to hear that both Finn and Hope are keeping their respective bad seed parents at arm's length. Lee is, however, unhappy about the influence Hope seems to have on her son, pointing out his decision to stay at the Shyla slash Deacon wedding. Finn reminds his mom he was only there to get food, because, you know, El Giardino's the only restaurant in Los Angeles, and he regrets having stayed. Lee says staying was foolish, dangerous, and disrespectful to Stephi. Not only do you need to stay away from Shyla, you need to stay away from Hope, Lai says, adding that she's only saying this out of love. Alone together, Ridge and Brooke blow off the idea of going down to the pool with the others in favor of going home and skinny dipping. Of course, they're soon talking about Hope again and the fact that she refused to marry Thomas and thus the relationship has ended. Brooke declares Thomas' relationship a classic rebound. Heaven knows she would know a thing or two about that, but Ridge insists Thomas' feelings for Paris are real. As Brooke and Ridge continue discussing Thomas, she admits that Hope hasn't necessarily been herself of late. She's been all over the place and I'm just worried she might do something she might regret. Brooke worries that Paris might not be aware of what she's gotten herself into, but Ridge says Thomas has been completely transparent with the young woman. At least Thomas didn't come home with some floozy from Tacoma, says Ridge, and both agree Paris is wonderful. Brooke has doubts, but Ridge is his usual, pie-headed self, refusing to think Thomas might be deluding himself. He says there's a man out there somewhere for hope. 
Hope Logan's heart etched as she stood outside the Forrester mansion, the words she had spoken to Thomas Forrester still echoing in her mind. I'm sorry, Thomas, but I can't be with you, she had said, her voice trembling with the weight of her decision. Thomas had looked at her with a mixture of hurt and determination, his eyes pleading silently for her to reconsider. She couldn't. Not after everything they had been through. The cycle of attraction and deception, the endless games. They had taken their toll on her soul. The evening sky was a deep shade of twilight, stars beginning to emerge like tiny beacons of hope. Hope took a deep breath, trying to steady her emotions. She knew she had made the right choice, yet why did it hurt so much? She needed to talk to someone, someone who could understand without judgment. Finn's face flashed in her mind. Dr. John Finnegan, the man who had become her rock in these tumultuous times, always there with a kind word or a gentle smile. She made her way to the cliff house, her steps slow and deliberate. As she reached the door, she hesitated for a moment, then knocked softly. Within seconds, the door opened and there stood Finn, his warm brown eyes filled with concern. Hope, he said, his voice a soothing balm to her frayed nerves. Come in. She stepped inside, the familiar scent of the ocean mingling with the comforting aroma of a home-cooked meal. Finn led her to the couch, his hand gently resting on her shoulder. I'm guessing it didn't go well with Thomas, he said softly. Hope shook her head, tears welling up in her eyes. I had to reject him again, Finn. He just, he doesn't understand. Or maybe he does, and he's just hoping that I'll change my mind. But I can't. I can't keep going back to him, hurting him and myself in the process. Finn nodded, his expression one of deep empathy. You did what you had to do, Hope. Sometimes the right decision is the hardest one to make. I know, she whispered, her voice breaking. But why does it feel like my heart is shattering into a million pieces? Finn reached out, taking her hand in his. Because you care. And that's a good thing. It means you're human. But you also need to take care of yourself. Letting go of Thomas might be painful now, but it will help you find the peace and happiness you deserve in the long run. Hope looked at him, grateful for his understanding. You always know what to say, she said, a faint smile tugging at her lips. He smiled back, his thumb gently brushing away a tear that had escaped down her cheek. I'm just here to listen and support you, Hope. Whatever you need, I'm here. For a moment, they sat in comfortable silence, the only sound the gentle crashing of waves outside. Hope felt a sense of calm wash over her, a stark contrast to the turmoil she had been feeling earlier. Finn's presence was like a soothing balm, and she realized just how much she valued their friendship. Thank you, Finn, she said softly. I don't know what I'd do without you. You don't have to thank me, Hope, he replied. That's what friends are for. And besides, you've been there for me too. We're in this together. Hope nodded, feeling a surge of affection for the man beside her. He had been a constant source of strength and comfort, someone she could always rely on. She leaned her head on his shoulder, closing her eyes as she let the steady rhythm of his breathing soothe her. As the night wore on, they talked about everything and nothing, their conversation flowing easily. Finn shared stories from his childhood, and Hope found herself laughing at his antics. For a while the pain of her recent encounter with Thomas faded into the background, replaced by a warm sense of companionship. At one point, Finn got up to make some tea, and Hope watched him move around the kitchen, his every action filled with a quiet grace she couldn't help but feel a pang of longing. Finn was everything she had ever wanted in a partner, kind, understanding, and dependable, but he was also married to Stephi, her best friend. The last thing she wanted was to complicate things further. When Finn returned with two steaming mugs, Hope took hers gratefully, savoring the warmth that seeped through the ceramic and into her hands. She took a sip, the fragrant chamomile calming her nerves. You know, Finn said, settling back down beside her, sometimes I wonder if things would have been different if we had met under different circumstances. Hope looked at him, her heart skipping a beat. What do you mean? He shrugged, a thoughtful expression on his face. 
I mean if we had met before everything got so complicated. Before the marriages, the betrayals, the secrets. Maybe things would have been simpler. Hope felt her pulse quicken. Was he implying what she thought he was? She searched his eyes, trying to read the emotions behind them. Finn, are you saying that?